Welcome to the Etobicoke Lakeshore Podcast, uh, brought to you by the Etobicoke Lakeshore Press, uh, a local publication that has served you well for a long time and in the midst of the coronavirus uh, episode, as we've heard it described by local politicians. Uh, we are here with some special episodes of the podcast to keep you informed and uh, up to date with what is happening right here in the community. Hi, Roger. Nice to see you. Good to see you too, Mike. I miss wearing shoes. I just wanted to say that. I'm not wearing shoes either. Or yeah. socks. I, yes. I, we will not oh. be able to wear shoes by the time that we're allowed to again. Just remember that. <laughs> Uh, and there will uh, be a boom in the shoe industry there. You know what? Maybe we should invest in shoes. Now we should all go buy new shoes. Yeah. And, and eat out at a local restaurant. Let's talk about that for one second before we have today's guest on, uh, by the way, tell us who today's guest is. This is important to the community. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. It's, uh, Christine Hogarth. She is the member of provincial parliament for Etobicoke Lakeshore. And uh, we had uh, Mark Grimes on. That episode also dropped uh, today. Uh, Councillor Mark Grimes with some great advice for families right there in the community. I'll recommend you have a listen to that. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's one of these things where we're trying right now, even from a remote uh, perspective, like we're doing social distancing to keep the podcast going and even a little more frequently uh, than normal. So I appreciate you putting the time in on that, Roger. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, thank you for making yourself so available. I think, like you said, it's really important. I think we need to be present more than ever. And to increase the frequency of these podcasts, uh, I think is crucial. I think it's a great way to, uh, to stay engaged with the, uh, the Etobicoke Lakeshore community, but also from a wider community throughout uh, Toronto and beyond. Okay, before we get to uh, Christine Hogarth, let's just take a minute and remind people uh, that one of the hardest hit industries that we've seen is definitely the restaurant industry. Um, and now people are ordering out. They have the opportunity to order from a num- number of places. I wanted to just put out there that there are amazing restaurants locally right here where we live and where we work that we should be supporting now. So please, if you would, make the effort, if you're ordering out, to order from the Etobicoke Lakeshore South Area, Etobicoke South Area, Uh, There's amazing restaurants that want and need your support now so that when we're able to go back to restaurants, they're still there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and we put a list out in our uh, April edition, which is dropping today. Uh, It's getting mailed out to homes in Long Branch and Mimico. And we put a list of businesses, uh, particularly food-related businesses, uh, who are, uh, they're adapting, they're staying uh, creative, they're offering um, you know, revised takeout and and, uh, delivery uh, menus, places like TJ O'Shea's Irish Snug there on Lakeshore, uh, Eden Trattoria down in in Humber Bay. Um, And there's a handful of others uh, as well that are, uh, you know, they're they're doing their best to to cope. Um, I was chatting with Nick. He's the uh, co-owner of DeCourses Cafe just at the near the corner of 22nd and, and Lakeshore. And, you know, not only is he is he the owner of his restaurant, but he also is the chef. So he's able to, uh, you know, kind of be a, a one man show, so to speak, and and and, and stay afloat. So yeah, that's amazing. recommend supporting uh, courses as well when you get hungry. There you go. You can order out and order out local and uh, keep things uh, nice in the community. Um, and I will also ask this: uh, Councillor Grimes mentioned this in the episode previous. Uh, the parks along the lakeshore are closed. Please do not go there. Uh, the longer that we uh, don't abide by these rules, the longer we could find ourselves uh, social isolating. So uh, just a quick reminder yeah. of that. Okay, yeah, well, it's cool. It's cool to follow the rules. It There's is, man. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Let's just let's get through it. Make the best of it. Uh, here's a funny story. So uh, Jess and I, we're, we're kind of making the best of it. We're trying to stay positive. We took this opportunity to potty train Luke, who is uh, 19 months. Nice. Um, And yeah, so he's ripping around the house, no diaper. He rarely wears a shirt. So you can imagine that image. Uh, (laughs) But, you know, he's getting it. And and we're like, yeah, why not? You know, we're all quarantined. We're all trying to stay low. We're trying to follow the rules here. So there are small opportunities that you can take that are going to enhance life right now. I um I'll tell you one that I'm doing. This is uh this is really weird. I'm painting. Yeah. I'm like wh- who what? I'll sh- I, in fact I'm gonna auction off one of my paintings and uh, uh, give the whole eight dollars to charity. 
<clears throat> I think I paid ten for the canvas. Uh, all right. Without further ado, as we uh, as we all struggle together and still find a way to pull together, uh, we turn now to Christine Hogarth from our uh, provincial government. Uh, thank you so much uh, from your social distance joining us on the show today. Well, thank you for having me today. I really do appreciate the opportunity to talk to the residents of Etobicoke. Uh, it's nice to uh, be in contact with the province uh, at a local level like we're doing. So, you know, to take the time and uh, put a localized spin on this is really kind of a treat at this point uh, because we have a, uh, a perspective is a Canadian perspective. We have a, a Toronto perspective. And of course, we are inundated uh, day and night with a U.S. and global perspective on what's going on with uh, COVID-19. But I thought it would be good out of the gate uh, just to kind of get your perspective on things and, and see how you're doing in this. Well, I, I thank you for that. And I thank both of you for, for putting on this um, podcast just so we can have a conversation with the people of, of really what's happening. And I know we always get our news sources and sometimes we're inundated with so much news that uh, we, need to, we need to actually leave our homes. So uh, yeah. Because it's it, what I find in the day, because I am working from home, I, I do check in with my office periodically, but the day doesn't end, right? It's not a nine to five. This is what we want to make sure is that if people have a question, we know that there's urgency behind those questions. So we want to make sure they're answered no matter what time of day. So sometimes people may even get an email from me at one in the morning as a response, just because, you know, I just want to make sure that, uh, people's minds are at ease because we have to look after each other in this time, right? It's not just our day to day. It's our minds. It's our minds too. So we have to look after our minds and people, there's so many questions out there. So because COVID-19 has actually changed the world, it's changed the world and it's changed our community in different ways. And yeah. that's how we, we hear from concerned people about their health and safety. And we are, we're, we have people who are concerned about the capacity of our medical system and others who just want to know how they can help to provide for their family during this unprecedented time. It's, you know, things are changing hour by hour, and it's difficult to know what to do. I was just going to say, it is always changing the uh, information. Some of it is very consistent, and of course, we want to get that message out there. One of the things I noticed, and I, I wonder about your perspective on this, I'm really proud to be Canadian right now. I take a look at other countries in the world that are not able to uh, rein this virus in, and a lot of that has to do with social compliance. And as Canadians, I actually have to commend us. Uh, so far, we seem to be on the list of countries doing better than most at this. Uh, well, you know, we do have, a, well, we are looking at every aspect, but the next two weeks are going to be some trying times for our community. And that's why you've probably heard the tone and the messaging from the Chief Medical Officer of Health and uh, our Premier and our Mayor. Uh, they're being very blunt we as people are the carriers of this virus. So if we don't do our part, we're not going to stop this virus. And that, and, and you've noticed the tone over the, yesterday, and I, I know you'll hear it today, uh, we have to do our part and our part is to social distance. You know, we, I, get, I get emails from people who live down at Humber Bay Shores quite a bit because of all these people in the park and they're concerned. We, uh, they go walk their dog or they just wanna get some fresh air, but there's so many people. Yeah, it, and it's funny, we, we, we spoke with uh, Councillor Mark Grimes, and that was one of his big messages was, look, please stay out of these parks. We need to have our summer, and we won't have it in these parks if we don't uh, take care to follow the, the, the rules now uh, of social distancing. Uh, is there an update that you think that we should have that nobody's getting out there or that people are missing uh, that's coming from the, uh, the province at the moment? Well, as uh, the Premier stated yesterday, the new, next two weeks are vital. Uh, we have an influx of people who came back from vacation. Uh, some of them did not self-isolate. What we're asking is anyone who is getting off a plane uh, that they are mandatory. They have to stay home for 14 days. And, and, so, and isolating does not mean going to the store to picking up your medicine. It does not mean going to the grocery store. It means just going home. And those are the messages we need to get out to people. If you believe you have the virus, stay home do not leave your home do not go pick up med medicine don't run to shoppers to grab to grab a tylenol just stay home that uh, that's the only way we're going to battle this it, it is an enemy out there and um we we as people have a responsibility to look after our friends families and our neighbors uh it's so funny that you touch on this uh, point of people that came back and then didn't self-isolate it's it's a very frustrating thing for people 
Uh, and that is really just a product of what we need to do, I think, probably moving forward, and that is look out for one another. Those people needed groceries. They should have made arrangements, and people should have made arrangements to get them. We had to do that in our family. It was just part of what we had to do. Uh, and, and so at this moment, is there, uh, is there any panic about, not panic, I guess, but is there any worry uh, at the provincial level that this spike will begin to become something that we're seeing in other countries like Italy or in pockets of the U.S. Well, um, I think they, they, I think the premier compared it to Spain yesterday, uh, which is not a good uh, visual. But we we know these things could happen. Yeah. The problem is we live in a big city, and even last night in I think it was Sunny Lee Park, uh, or was, I can't remember which park it was. Anyways, the they. They had, I guess, CP24 was there, and there was cars and cars and cars parked. People just aren't listening, and sometimes it's young people. You know, there are people who died as young as 13 with this this virus. And certainly just, they can be carriers of the virus uh, as easily as anybody we've discovered. That's right. You yeah. need to protect your parents. You need to protect your grandparents. We're not invincible. It doesn't matter what age you are. You know, I have two stepdaughters. One's 18 and one's 16. You know, they, they're doing their social distance. They both work at corner stores. So they actually still go to work every day, but you know, they're being careful. And uh, you know, you, you, this is a time for young people to stay home and maybe pick up the phone. I don't know if they even know what a phone is, but <laughs> <laughs> they, can, they can certainly- <laughs> Call their grandparents and call their parents. Just say, hey, I'm okay. I'm, I'm doing my part. Uh, I had to get my dad to show me how to use Zoom. So don't worry, uh, grandma and grandpa <laughs> probably know what they're doing already. What are you hearing in the way of questions from uh, residents uh, in your area? Do you know, uh, some of the questions I've received, um, and I'm, I'm really glad that we're touching on this because this needs to get out uh, because it keep, people are concerned, especially with the new rules in place. Uh, oh, will I get arrested if I go for a walk in the park? No, you're not going to get arrested at all. Uh, you probably will get a warning if you're social distancing, what, uh, if you're not social distancing. What we're finding is people go to the park or because it's the waterfront, they need to clear their head and they'll cluster in a group. As we are, we're social animals. That's who we are, right? We yeah. see people like I'm a hugger. I have, uh, you know, I hug everybody. So I, uh, you know, you have to learn how to, you can still take your dog out, um, but just stay two meters or six feet apart. So the, it, people, it's like about the Blanco hockey stick. So stay apart. So just don't cluster in a group and have a conversation. You can have a conversation in a larger area. Just don't group together. And that's the key piece we need to get across to people. Do not cluster. And that means don't play volleyball together. Don't play basketball together. I know that's not clustering, but you're all sharing the same ball. You know, it, it, yeah. it's a, what I'd love for people to do is practice common sense. This is a really common sense for everybody. Just think about your actions before you act. Uh, and it's funny uh, that you, you talk about the people that are clustering down by the waterfront and uh, parking there. You're right. It is human nature. And what maybe what it is, is we're just learning to be humans in this in this capacity. And it is difficult because we are social animals. And this is such a long stretch that uh, that we're looking at. Let's talk about some of the businesses in the area, as long as we're talking about the extension of this uh, social uh, social isolation uh, period. Certainly in this area specifically, there's a lot of uh, independently owned businesses, restaurants, uh, stores, uh, specialty retail and stuff like that. What what could you recommend that as residents we do to help these businesses stay afloat at, at a time like this? Well, thanks, Mike, for that question. I think that's it, one thing we have to remember is everybody's hurting. We have people who've lost their jobs, uh, having a hard time paying their rent, have landlords that renters aren't paying their rent and we have our small businesses that are just trying to stay afloat and a lot of those are you know they any hey anyone's a small business owner you know you work 24 hours a day seven days a week it's not uh, it, it, that's business and a lot of times you had to lay off your staff um what we can do is uh, make sure that we get takeout uh from your local local restaurants um Make sure that uh, we are there to support them. The government is there. Uh, both levels of government are there to support our businesses, to help them through this challenging time. But I think we can do our part by making sure that if we are looking for something to eat, maybe we go there and drop by and, um, well, you can't, you can't stay long, but order takeout and uh, uh, support our local local businesses and make sure we continue to do so. And, and our local grocery stores as well. 
it's so important that we continue these jobs in our community and that they survive. A lot of them are going to have a tough time surviving after this crisis is over. Um, but we want to make sure that they're in business and we can help them as much as we can. And I know a lot of our magazines and our, uh, I look at our social media, for, uh, social media feeds, they really do promote some of these businesses yeah. that are offering takeout. So, you know, keeping to do that. So I thank all the media outlets for doing that and the social media, um, in fact, I noticed, Roger, that you are publishing in this month's edition a list of all the places you could order from if you wanted to on a local basis. We did. When this crisis hit, I called all my customers. Uh, I even called people who have never done business with me or, or who have done business with me in the past. And I just said, look, how can I help? What are you guys doing uh, now that uh, this is happening? Uh, are you shifting? How are you adapting? What What can I do to, to help support you? Um, and so and I, I think a lot of them... <clears throat> are trying to stay positive. They're trying to keep their heads above water and, and, and be nimble and they're coming up with, with new solutions. And so I really want to shine a light on those folks and, and promote, especially like you said, Christine, like the local uh, restaurants, um, a lot of whom now are shifting to takeout and, and, and pick up menus. Some have closed their doors altogether and I agree with you. I think it's going to be tough for them to bounce back, um, but it's up to us to help them. Um, you know, everyone has a limited amount of disposable income, but if we can use that in a socially conscious way, I think it's going to go a long way to help repair the entire community. Uh, you know, one of the things that I also wanted to mention is that these retail uh, businesses have adapted. I went to a bakery the other day where I was expected to uh, sanitize my hands, then put gloves on and a mask. Uh, somebody mm -hmm. in the store served me off the retail shelves, what it was I wanted to purchase, and I made my way into line socially distant from the person uh, uh, near me and they allowed five people in the store things moved along just beautifully there was not a single issue the as humans we've adapted in a lot of ways so if you're worried to go into certain retail outlets just have a look at what they're doing at the door and that's a good indication that you're probably safe to go in because what we're doing is managing as uh, christine pointed out beautifully common sense that's right and you know i I I tend to send my husband to do the shopping. So because I do I the, hear that. <laughs> I do the delivering because I my have I have a fam my, my sister and my brother in law, my nephew in, are in isolation. So we do a, a porch drop for them. And my mother's older, so although she would hate that I just said that. She is <laughs> she's a, she's in her condo, so I do a drop for her. Um but uh, you know, when you do the shopping, I, I hear when he comes home it's you know, don't bring your kids shopping with you. Yeah. You know, don't shop with four or five people. Yeah. Just, these are the common sense things. Go alone. You know, you don't need that extra body. If you're if you're having to go shopping, it's not a leisurely stroll around the store. You get items and you, and you leave, right? Yeah. So it, it's a little bit of, and I think people need to be kind and people need to be patient. Uh, the patience is a key one because when you see some of you see people with like three kids in tow. And you're going, why, why are your children here? You know, uh, you have to, you have to, maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't know they shouldn't be bringing their kids out or maybe they don't have anyone to watch their kids. But uh, I, I just recommend people, if you are going shopping, please loan and leave your children at home. Uh, now, what about uh, manufacturing on that side of things? This is a, uh, there's no, no shortage of manufacturing uh, in the area that you represent. Um, is, is there a way that we can reach out to help those people uh, in business and, and those businesses keep employees uh, happening? Well, more so, this is a great question. It goes to what uh, Premier Ford uh, talked about yesterday. We have a $50 million fund. It's called the Together Ontario Fund. And uh, what we're looking for is manufacturers that can change or retool their designs so that they can help um, help manufacture PPE, which is protective uh, personal protective equipment. We talk about gowns, we talk about masks, we talk about ventilators. We have companies that are coming from everywhere, and Ontario, you know, might be the epicenter where we actually will produce these products for Canada. Uh, so we're really pushing this. And if anyone, if there is any business in Etobicoke that can change the way they do business. To manufacture any of these key supplies we are in need the country is in need the world is in need so um there is a, a website and I, I'll, I'll share some and if anybody wants to go call my office or go to my website we have these listed 
um, it's, it's together, it's, it's Ontario together. It's, uh, I think it's uh, Ontario.ca, Ontario together. And what we're looking for is ideas. If, if you can produce masks, let us know. And it's a central portal that uh, we're funneling all information so they can assess what can be done. And so many people of Ontario, so many Ontarians have stepped up to the plate to say that we can do this. You know, if you have a 3D printer, there's work for you to do. So let, let us know where you can help. And it's through Ontario Together. Ontario. I could just jump in there to add to that, Christine. I think you're exactly right. I think what we're going to see if, if it hasn't happened already is this grass move, grassroots movement of, of local or craft manufacturers. Uh, and, and it could even be the guy uh, with the 3D printer in his home like Stu Bailey of New Toronto, for example, he's a friend of ours, and uh, he is producing um, face shields right now and dropping them off at local uh, medical clinics, walking clinics on Lakeshore. And, and I think there's this movement of, of, of these 3D printers, these makers, who are retooling, like you say, and devoting their time now to making these, um, you know, PPE uh, devices that you had mentioned. And I, I kind of hope that when the dust settles here, that we might end up with uh, a new and revitalized local manufacturing industry in Ontario. You know what? I think that would be amazing. You know, those are such great jobs and they're long-term jobs. So we want to make sure, and I, and you know, there's, there's, there is money there if you need the help to retool your, 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 your site, your business to, to produce what you need to do. Um, and they were, they're returning this around pretty quickly because we need, we need ventilators. We need this. We want to make sure our frontline workers are protected. We do have enough supply. The premier actually has gone to the site, the warehouse to check out what we have. Um, but this is going to get worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. So we need to be honest with people. So we will, if we don't act now, we will run out of equipment. So we need to, I know we have 10,000 ventilators that are coming to Ontario in the next couple of weeks. And uh, we have people manufacturing, like Bruce Power yesterday gave 600,000 masks. That was incredible. You know, companies that have these things. So if there's like a nail shop, a dental shop, yep. this is how you can help out your community members. Uh, uh, you mentioned a gentleman named Stu who's making visors for, for local doctors all these little people this is this is this is our ontario spirit you know this is our community spirit people who are giving uh giving equipment that they don't need today they might need it in the future but they don't need it today but there's somebody on the front lines who is saving a life who needs that material right now so i thank all those people i thank those people from the bottom of my heart for thanking and thinking about others um there's no sense that those masks sitting on a shelf for another couple months uh, it is incredible how people will come together on this front. Uh, it, it, it is, I hate to make the comparison, but it is uh, a wartime effort in the, in the regard that we are trying to save our own lives. And uh, so for people to step up and some of the innovation that I've heard about just over the last two or three days, right out of Ontario here, from people creating apps to uh, people working on, uh, you know, medical visors, like you pointed out, all of this sort of stuff, our focus uh, is it, you can have uncertainty, but you can also channel that uncertainty into creating certainties that you are a protecting somebody that you're keeping people employed. Please go and check out the site. I'm there right now. It's really well put together. Ontario.ca uh, slash Ontario together. And uh, you can find out more information there. Uh, Christine, let's talk about the kids in school and, uh, and uh, university students. This uh, as a parent, is the, one of the most impactful things that has occurred because of the coronavirus. How's the province looking at this right now? Well, just the other day, we extended the uh, school closures until May the 4th. Um, and we, we did that with advice from the Chief Medical Officer of Health. You know, looking after our children is our number one important. And, it, you know, it's so important. And kids, kids, well, it's hard to keep kids apart from one another. Yeah. Just as we talk about another question that we get, um, one other thing people ask a lot, can my kids go and play with the neighbors? They, they can't, um, you know, they can play with their siblings, but they should not be playing with other kids in a, in a park. So I just wanted to toss that in, um, when we talk about our children. So Minister Lecce has announced the second phase of our education program, and, uh, we have it at Ontario.ca learn at home. So it's a two phased uh, process and, uh, it, 
if, if children don't have, um, if you don't have a computer, we are working with some of the school employees to make sure that they get the tools they need. But we want kids to continue to learn. Uh, I think it's important to keep their minds busy it's, uh, and active and continue to learn. We, hey, we, our, our kids will remember this forever, but we want to make sure that they, they have their education moving forward. So there is a, a portal called uh, Ontario.ca Learn at Home, and there is the educational contact that was designed by teachers. Uh, so it's not designed by politicians. <laughs> it's designed by teachers to make sure that the kids get the best learning experience uh, that they can get. And when it comes to our post-secondary school, as we know that everybody is facing some hardship, we have forgiven our OSAP loans. So they're going to be on hold. And it's not like, you're, it's not like your bank and, the, and your mortgage where you have to end up paying your interest to the, down the line. We're going to make it interest-free because that, you know, anyone who doesn't pay their, their bills, you know how the interest just keeps accumulating and accumulating. Yeah. So we're going to make it interest-free until September just to give people a little bit of... Um, breathing room over the next couple of months. As we all know, it, you know, sometimes it's good to know how to pay a bill, but you know, sometimes it's good to know what it feels like not to pay a bill. So you can put yourself in somebody else's shoes and it's pretty stressful times when you can't pay those bills. So we want to make sure that, uh, uh, that our young people and not just young people, all of ages who go to school don't have to have that, that little bit of anxiety on their shoulders. I can, I can, I can throw this little bit of uh, parenting learning advice in if you have a student learning at home. Try not to be too loud doing your podcast because apparently that just ruins everything for uh, getting a good lecture in. That's what my daughter <laughs> expressed to me. Uh, I will point out at the Learn at Home uh, section of the Ontario website, once again, Ontario.ca Learn at Home, a great resource. Uh, right at the top it says, to fight the spread of COVID-19, Ontario public schools will remain closed to teachers until May 1st and to students until May 4th. And according to the Declaration of Emergency, this can only be extended for 14, one 14-day period at a time. So if you're wondering what is going to happen moving forward, know that the province can only uh, do this 14 days out. And uh, so they're doing the best they can in that, in that regard as well. But uh, just a wonderful resource. This was uh, a really good, uh, really good place to begin here. And uh, of course, to all parents struggling with grade six math again, like I would do, we're all in it together. Uh, how can we uh -huh. stay informed overall, uh, Christine? Well, the best place is uh, Ontario.ca backslash coronavirus. That, uh, we keep updating that daily. I also update, uh, I also have a, my Facebook page. If anybody, it's uh, Christine Hogarth EL. EL stands for Etobicoke Lakeshore. I update it probably about four times a day. As soon as I get a message from the government, I'll post it on my Facebook page because social media is really the fastest way to get that information out to people. So if, if anybody wants to join my Facebook site, we also send out a weekly newsletter to anyone we have an email account for that gives an update. We have an update going out today to, I think we have a, a couple of thousand people on the list, which is still a small number compared to the number of people in the riding. So if you'd like to be added to my distribution list, just give my office uh, a call. You're probably going to ask me for the phone number of my office, and I probably don't know it. <laughs> it's 416-259-2249, uh, or you can email us at christine.hogarth at pc.ola.org, and we're happy to keep people apprised. Uh, we do a weekly update unless something urgent comes out, and we'll send that out immediately. Social media is probably our best bet. Uh, to get something quickly um, and you know the Ontario site it's not just it's not just Ontario site it's also the Canada site and the Toronto site you know this is not just an Ontario problem it's the Canada problem and and it's also a Toronto problem because we will see more we will see more and I'm going to be honest we're going to see more deaths in Toronto than anywhere else because it is a big city right um, so that's just the unfortunate fortunate side of this virus. Um, I'm just going to ask everybody, please use common sense. If you have any questions, call us, email us. Uh, I, I've been answering emails pretty much all day long, all day long um, in the evenings. My staff are there. My staff are working. Uh, my office is two floors, so I have one on each floor working, which works out perfectly. Oh, that's so, uh, that's good. Good distancing. Well done. 
It is good distancing. So they, uh, and uh, so they're fine and they're there answering emails all day. And, and I sort of take the night shift and the weekend shift on the emails. So uh, we are all working to try to make sure that if, uh, if you're, and, and I understand, you know, there's so many unknowns right now and we're all just human beings and we're stressed, we're concerned, we don't know the answers. So if we can answer that question for you, we're happy to be there for you. But uh, please keep in contact. If you feel sick and you have questions, call the Telehealth Ontario hotline, which is 1-866-797-0000. And, uh, you know, just if I can add a message, just everyone, just be kind to one another, be patient. Please practice social distancing or physical distancing, whatever they're calling it today. And that's two meters apart. We're care. We could we could be carriers, and we want to make sure everyone's okay, not just physically but mentally as well. And if and if you do have questions about your mental health, call two one one. That's the Ontario number, and they will address you. They will send you to the right right location because we have to look after our heads too. That's an awesome message. We are all in this together. You made me feel better about stuff in that regard, uh, Christine Hogarth. Thanks so much for taking the time in the midst of uh, being so busy uh, but it is really important that we had this moment to share with everybody and uh, I hope that we'll be able to do it again as things move uh, closer uh, you know as, as we move along in this hopefully we get to a, uh, a removal of the declaration of emergency and we're able to get back to life uh, between here and there let's chat again and when it's time to get back out there we need to motivate people to go enjoy summer we'd love to get you back for that as well. Well, thank you for the opportunity to share a message and thank you both for sharing that message and giving a, a format so we can share, uh, you know, even just have a conversation for people to, to listen to. You know, as I said, we are in this together. We're going to we're going to get out of this together. So let's be positive and let's keep social distancing. But we all need some fresh air. It's a nice sunny day there. So I, I encourage everyone to go outside on their front porch if they can. Just don't go near anyone. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> okay, everybody. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we will uh, we will wrap this episode here. But I promise you this, we'll be back with more information. Uh, we've done it at the local level, now at the provincial level. Uh, and we will head uh, federally next uh, to keep you informed with what is happening as we all are in this together. Thank you, everybody. We'll catch you next time. Thanks, Christine. Thank you. Thank you.